Hello everyone and welcome to week two of Art Starts Explores Folding. My name is Kay Slater and it's my voice you're hearing or whose uh, words you're reading in the captions. And I will be leading us through week two of exploring uh, folding. If you, uh, if you joined us last week, welcome back. If this is your first week joining us, you can go back and check out the first week that we explored folding or any of our previous sessions um, on online. If you're watching us on Facebook, it's in our Facebook videos. We also have them on YouTube, as well as on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. So last week we explored um, just playing with folding. We had a mark making tool and a piece of paper and we just folded and checked out what happened as we folded, made a mark, unfolded, and it was a lot of fun. This week I thought what we could explore is storytelling or folding as a narrative tool. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to use it at folding paper or folding whatever you want to fold as a way to allow a story to unfold. <laughs> so the idea that you reveal through folds as you go along um, to lead somebody through a story. So as a way of showing pacing, so how fast they should go through something or revealing or hiding things so that people can focus. Um, and we're going to try all that out today. So before we get started, I was thinking about some of the tools that we might need to explore uh, storytelling. And as usual, I recommend we grab some paper. It doesn't have to be clean paper. I absolutely recommend you go to the recycling bin and see what you can find. If there's things written, drawn, printed on the other side, that's okay. Everything that we're trying today is, uh, is not for keeps. And so it's just gonna be a prototype. We're just trying it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. And so uh, draft paper or recycled paper is just great. A mark making tool. For me, I always stick with um, markers for my, my mark, sorry, for my mark making um, tool at Explorers because it's got so much contrast. So it's pretty easy to see um, on your screens through, my through your camera. But for you, a mark making tool could be a pencil, it could be crayons, it could be pencil crayons, it could be a piece of charcoal, anything that makes a mark on a page. But I'm gonna stick with markers this week. Then I made a dotted line to show that this is optional. So this is in case you have some handy, but it's not, it's not essential, it's optional if you have it. Um, you could grab some glue or you could grab some tape. I don't tend to have the plastic tape in my studio, but if you have plastic tape, clear tape, that's just fine. Again, because this isn't for keeps, it's okay that the green is a different color from the paper. I don't need it to disappear because this is just trying things out. That's only if you have it available. So I'm going to put it over to the side right now. And if we need it, I have it handy. Okay. So I'm going to move some of these things around a little bit, just so I've got a bit more space. Explore together. I'm going to keep that out. But I'm going to move our tools. And you know who I am. Move that to the side so we've got a little bit more space to make. All right. So what do I mean by folding as a narrative tool? Well, can you think of something that is folded that you use to read stories? You said pages in a book or a journal, then that's what I was thinking. The idea that when you flip a page, you are revealing information 
and then hiding or moving away from information with each page you turn. And so because we're familiar, this is a pretty common um, way of folding. I'm gonna take two of my pieces of paper. Oh, this one doesn't have anything on the other side. That's cool. And I'm gonna fold these together like a little pretend book. Maybe I'll do one more because I have extra pieces of paper. If you have one big piece of paper, you could rip it into smaller pieces. If you don't have nice long pieces of paper that you can easily fold, you could cut them or rip them and then staple them together. It doesn't have to be this big either. Here, I could take this page. And make a smaller book. Right? And I could keep going. I love to rip paper. So any excuse to rip paper, I'm going to take it. But if you're not as comfortable ripping paper as I am, you can grab a pair of scissors as well to um, cut your paper into smaller pieces. It also doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a nice square edge. You could rip it and it could be jagged on the side. That's fine. We're just trying things out. But there we go. So now I made a mini book. Any size is just fine. Side. Go put this with my mini host. There we go. I can read this. Check that out. <laughs> and then I've got my bigger book over here. Okay. So before we even put anything on the page, try flipping over the folded paper and, and ask yourself what you notice. What do you notice every time you turn a page? What do your fingers or your wrist, elbow, your chin, however you turn the page, what do you notice when you turn the page? Slow down and feel your hands or however you're using to turn the page. What does it feel like to turn a page? Close your eyes. Does it change how you turn the page? What does it feel like when you get to the end of your book? What's the first thing you want to do when you get to the end of the book? If you are not reading in, um, in English, or any other language that reads left to right, as in this is the first page, and then we would read left, right, left, right. Maybe you are used to reading right, right, left, right, left. So if you normally read left to right with the open pages um, open on the right hand side, try flipping over your folded pages and see how it's different. If you're normally right handed, try flipping the pages with your left hand. If you're left handed, try flipping with your right hand. Does it change? Does it make you feel different? What do you notice? I know for me, what I noticed was I read left to right. And when I got to the end and got to that last page, the first thing I wanted to do was pick it up, make the pages sit nice and flat, and then flip it back over so that it started back at the beginning again. Because I'm so used to reading books like this, when I get to the end, this is a sign to me that we can start over again. And for me, because I'm using paper, see that act? I'm not even really thinking about it. When I got to the end and some of the pages kind of shifted out, I just want to, 
tap the bottom and turn it over. What else do you notice? You might do something completely different when, you, uh, when you're flipping the pages. And it could be because of how you read or how you were taught. It could be because of the paper that you're using. Maybe your paper is thicker than mine if you got it out of a sketchbook or you're using folded cardboard. What do you notice? So I don't even have anything on the page yet. Nothing is written. Even on the pages where I did have some already printed stuff, there's still something very intuitive, something that I already think of without being told that makes me want to flip the pages over when there's a book like this. To check, to explore and see what's hidden. Because it is kind of like a box, isn't it? We're hiding away all this treasure locked behind the lid. And until we open up the box, we can't access the story treasure that's inside. And so flipping the page or the covers on a book is kind of an invitation. We're welcoming somebody. We're welcoming the person who's holding our book to come in and explore. And that was just by doing one fold. That was just one fold in the paper, in just plain paper, that made us do that thing. <laughs> That's me tapping again. Okay, let's grab our mark making tool. Let's start with a face. And if you don't want to do a face and you want to explore something else, you absolutely can. But I'm going to start by drawing a circle, two dots. Oh, and my marker might go through the page. Yep, a little bit. wonder if I have a marker that's still dark that won't go through the page. That looks all right. Okay, I'm gonna continue with my, my scented green marker. There we go. Still okay? Yep. It's not for keeps. It's okay if it goes through, no problem. But because I want each thing to be its own page, um, I don't really want it to leak through so much. But if you wanted to to, to look like it was the same on each page except for a little bit different then maybe you would want to use a marker that goes through the page that's up to you there are other ways and explore them if you wanted each page to be the same for me because i have this printer paper i think yep it's dark enough for me to see you might not be able to see but i can basically trace through just by the darkness of the page. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And you know what, I'm gonna keep going because I already started drawing like this. I'm gonna put this on the right side of each page. Because why not? Right. So I didn't put a mouth on this. Can you think of why I didn't put a mouth on this? If you were drawing a face and you drew a mouth right away, that's okay. I was thinking I didn't want to draw a mouth on it because I hadn't decided what I wanted to say with my story yet. I knew I wanted to have a person, but by changing this detail of the mouth, because we associate a upward, so this, this shape, this half circle shape to be a smile, that kind of makes you think that by flipping the page, 
I want you to feel happy before you flip the page. And I haven't decided what I want my story to be yet. I haven't decided what mood or emotion I want this folded page to say. I just made the decision of the face. So what am I going to do? Do I want it to be a happy face? Do I want it to be a sad face? Do I want to leave it? And so it's a mystery for somebody. Do I want to do a whole bunch of faces and then give it to somebody else? And then they have to fill in the story. That could be a really fun activity where you and somebody else do the outline of, of a different face, and then you swap with each other. You put in some different emotions. Uh, what other? There could be yelling face, with maybe a tongue down here. There could be a mouth, again, with that tongue, but then maybe there's a single tooth, which kind of makes you think of a baby. Or somebody who only has one tooth. There could be somebody who is really sad, so sad, their mouth is open and some of their teeth is exposed and again, their tongue here, maybe they're crying. Really, really sad. Uh, maybe they're angry. They're so angry that their mouth is open and you can see their tongue, but then you can also see their upper glottis at the back. They're yelling. Their mouth is so open that you can see their mouth. So there are lots of ways that we could be uh, expressing the story. We could be telling the story just by changing that one mouth. And so, yeah, you could trade with each other and then you get it back. And then you have to tell a story based on the different faces that are there. So I really like that idea. I'm going to take these to the side. And you know what? I'm going to add, I'm going to keep adding. This time I'm going to add the faces to this side so that the, the faces are on every single right-hand page of my book. And this fold line helps me to line up the edges of my page so that it's the same. You could go up to a window and do this part where you have um, the light shining through the window to make it easier to trace. If you have a tracing table, you could do that. If you had really light paper, like onion skin paper, you could use that to easily trace or tracing paper. If you have a mobile tablet, you could turn the tablet on and it'll shine light and then you could trace it onto each page. You can try out a bunch of different things. Oh, I forgot this one. Okay, one more. Okay, so now face, 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 face. There we go. Okay, so I've made my, my story, or at least the outline of my story, my prototype of my story, and then I'm going to hand it off to a friend. The friend is going to go, okay, I'm going to draw a bunch of different faces. This one, I think I'll probably just start with the happy face. Then maybe I'll do a meh face. And then maybe I'll do a really sad face. Really sad. Not crying. Teeth. Really upset. There we go. And then maybe 
On this one, it'll be a surprise face. Yep. And then on this page, it'll be a singing face. go. And then on this page, it will be a oh, sour face. <laughs> there we go. All right. And so you line these up like this. And you give it back to the person who originally made the faces. And now it's time to tell a story based on the pages. And I'm gonna give it a shot. Once upon a time, there was a human named Nat. Nat was super happy, just a happy, happy person. Till one day, they looked out the window. Oh, this is supposed to be my singing one. <laughs> I like nasty details, why not? Uh, they were such a happy person that they found themselves singing around the house. La 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 la. Till they accidentally bit their tongue. Ouch. Tears streaming down their face. Gosh, said Nat. I don't want to do that again. Because that was really awful. And I didn't like that at all. And so Nat decided they would never sing again. Da, da, da. <laughs> so not, such, not such a happy, happy story, but that's okay because now what happens uh, if I refold the pages like this. All right. So I flipped the pages around. I folded them so that they were in a different direction and then changed their order. Let's try this again. Once upon a time, there was a, na um, a human named Nat. Nat was not feeling so great because once upon a time, they had decided to never sing again. And this really bothered them because Nat loved to sing. Nat decided enough was enough after, or uh, they had a really bad afternoon and they knew that they would feel better if they were singing. Why can't I sing? Who says I can't sing? Cried Nat. All of a sudden Nat realized, well, no one says that. It was only me. Nat decided to take a chance and had a little song or sang a little song. Things were much better for Nat after that. So same pictures, just in a different order. And it was very intuitive to me to flip it from page to page. I didn't go this page, then this page, then this page, right? Because it was a sequence. It was very obvious to me that this folded paper, this one fold here, meant that I was supposed to go one, two, three, four. But what if we were to draw it on this side, right? Tell the story in this direction. You'd have even more faces if you did them on both sides of the page. And then you could have a story that you tell in one direction and then give a little clue at the end that says turn it over or maybe repeat or maybe you could even write repeat and then you would tell the story in one direction and you get to the end and then you'd go back and tell the story again but in reverse So that was just a single fold. What happens 
we fold it again. over here as well. Okay. What do we have now? Now we have a face that has all these extra lines to it. So maybe I'm going to add a line over there. What, is it, what could this even mean? So that face. Or, oh, or that face. Or that face or that face. Could you tell a story with these additional folded pieces? Could you tell a story that unfolds differently so that you would read it all folded? Fold them this way. There you go. Here we go. So you tell the story with the pages folded, and then maybe behind that folded page there, you go unfold. So somebody started out by reading this, 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 oh, unfold. And then we unfold the page. And then you unfold the page. And then you unfold the page. Right? Can you build a story that when you hide things by folding, you reveal things at different times when people unfold. What if we had different actions that were hidden behind the page on this side? So it was open. And so first you only see it like this, but then you flip over the page, oh, open me. And then maybe there's a, a whole different story inside here. Aha. Uh -huh. No, close me. <laughs> so then the story reads, this funny weird face here, flip the page, open me. Oh, what happens? Oh no, close me. <laughs> and then you could tell them to open this side and it's ha ha. And then you could tell them something else to do. And so just by folding the paper, you could have somebody interact with the story in a different way than just flipping the pages left to right. So that was just a single fold. That was basically just a book. And what we kind of learned from that was reading left to right and right to left um, is something that somebody intuitively 
or naturally does. Um, and so we can tell a story knowing that somebody's going to follow that path. But that was through a bifold or by a single fold. So the paper was folded into two, which is what bifold means. What if we folded a paper in multiple ways? So this paper is out of a sketchbook. So it's, ooh, it's much thicker than the thin paper that I was using. But I think I wanted to have a nice long piece of paper here. So I'm gonna try and just using my fingers, rip the paper, rip, rip, rip. There we go, that was all right. Now I have this one right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this one in multiple ways or have multiple folds. So fold in in half, yep, there's the book story. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And then I'm gonna fold it again. So we've still got, by folding it kind of like a snake, oh, there's an M for a snake. We still have this open side over here. So somebody could read it by reading page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six. But I guess they could keep going. Page seven, page eight, page nine, and then flip it over. So there's more pages. You can access both sides of the, of the book by just continuing to flip left which is pretty cool. But there's no reason why somebody couldn't also take the book and go, oh, open this up and then unfold it. And so you could tell a story, one, two, three, four, where the creases that you made, the folds, are kind of like the panels in a comic book. They show you that each line, each area is part of the story and that you should give each one of these panels your attention one at a time, sequen sequentially. One, two, three, four. I don't know if my, my creases show really well on my camera. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark these out a little bit so that you can see it a little clearer where my creases are. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about at like a comic book, how you've got panel one, two, three, four, and then panel one or four, five, five six, seven, eight. <laughs> and depending on how you tell the story, depending on how you draw things or any kind of marks, you could do a arrow that lets people know that they should be going to the left or that they should be flipping the page. You could actually show a page being flipped. You could show flip over. So somebody should actually turn the whole thing upside down. You could draw the pictures this way so that it only makes sense if somebody opens it up like this, or flips it over like this. And if you wanted them to keep going, one, two, three, four, five, six, same thing. You could either draw it in that, in, um, in that orientation, or you could give them little legends or little marks, little um, interactive icons so that they know how you wanted them to uh, do the story. The easiest way would be sequentially to write the numbers. One, two, three, four. And I think I'm gonna do that right now 
just for my prototype because it'll help me also remember while I'm drawing how I want people to interact with the story. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I put that one up a high. Six, seven, eight. It looks like I have eight different panels to tell my story. What's cool about this is that if somebody gets the page where it's not folded up properly and they just see it laying out flat, oh, they'll know I'm missing. I'm missing part of the story here because I can't start at two. And if they were to flip it over, they'd go, oh, I'm missing a lot of the story and I'm probably not supposed to read this six upside down. And for access reasons, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross my seven there so that it's got the line so it's a little clearer. And they'd know that this should be read like this and not like this. So just by putting numbers on the piece of paper, you're giving uh, a whole bunch of information to somebody of how they should be reading your folds of paper. That's going to bother me. This is just a prototype, so I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to put my four down here. Okay. So let's draw something really quickly using the sequence of the folds.
Okay. <laughs> so this is my really quick drawing. I'd love to see what you were drawing um, wherever you were making as well. I didn't really have a plan, so I was just drawing whatever came into mind and just wanted to tell a really quick story. So here's what I came up with. It's a beautiful day outside, and there was a tree just chilling out near the sidewalk. A bunch of birds spotted some seed, came on down, started to make some chirping noises. They're hanging out. You know what? I think I'm going to add some lines here. They're loudly talking. More birds are showing up. They're really loud. They're making all this noise. The tree super isn't into it. Rawr! The tree has had enough and scares the birds. I think I'm going to put a little exclamation mark over top of these birds. They're so surprised. Fly away. And then the tree is happy. <laughs> and then it goes back to the beginning again where the tree is super chilled out. So just by putting this accordion fold through this page, I was able to tell a story in sequence where people would reveal the different parts of the story by folding and unfolding the page. These are just a few ways that you can explore folding. And I would love to keep exploring with you next week when I continue exploring um, folding for our week three. If you have, uh, if you made something cool today and you want to share with us, we'd love to hear from you on Facebook or YouTube. And you can check out this session all over again, previous sessions um, on folding or any of our earlier sessions at artstarts.com slash explorers dash online. Um, and I'm going to leave my camera running for a few extra minutes, like I always like to do, because we need to clean up the space, because part of Explorers uh, is respecting our space and cleaning up, and we're all finished. So I hope to see you next week on Saturday for week three of Folding. Thanks so much!